Right now, some of the world's brightest minds on HIV AIDS are gathering at an AIDS conference in Seattle in the U.S. state of Washington. And joining me from there is Dr. David Margolis, professor of medicine at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine. Dr. Margolis, uh, you lead in an initiative called CARE. You're basically trying to develop the next breakthrough in the treatment of HIV. Tell us uh, what would be different about your approach. Um, well, our group and several other groups have been working on this sort of the next level of treatment uh, for HIV. Currently, drugs can suppress virus replication and restore health, but people have to take medication for the rest of their lives. So we're looking for ways to either completely eliminate the virus from the body of an infected person or fundamentally uh, arm the person's immune system with um, tools so that they can control virus uh, without having to take therapy. Doctor, I don't need to tell you this. I'm sure you know it already. The effort's going to take a long time to pull off. There's always the research phase, clinical trials, approval process. Can you walk us through how complex all of this is? Oh, I think it's uh, so complex that we know we don't understand all the things we need to know. We're in a lot of the basic research phase trying to understand how the virus persists despite therapy and where, what kinds of cells in the body it persists in. But we do know a lot, and we've made a lot of advances in the last few years. Uh, just over the last few years, we've started to find ways to unmask the latent virus that's hidden so that it might be attacked and cleared by the immune system. Uh, at this conference um, this week, there, was a number, there were a number of presentations giving us further understanding of, of how to measure the tiny amounts of virus that are left over and hidden away and the presentation of a new um, medication or drug uh, that might uh, reveal the virus or um, expose it to the immune system in a new way. So we're developing some new tools. Uh, it may be five or 10 or 15 years, but I think we're making steady progress. Let's talk about uh, the current uh, course of drug treatment here in the United States. Some patients uh, just simply won't be taking their so-called antiretrovirals. Doctors trying just about everything to get them to, including paying patients a modest amount of money to convince them to take the drugs. Why are some patients not doing it? Well, I think you're referring to a study that was also, um, you know, publicized or reported at this meeting where the idea of paying patients small amounts of money as an incentive to take their medication and to come to clinic to be followed up uh, actually failed to improve the percentage of patients that were taking medicine successfully. I think a lot of the problems are really uh, the burdens, the social burdens of both disease and the difficulties of uh, challenges of life that some, some people face, um, um, psychiatric problems, um, alcohol or substance use, the demands of poverty and uh, the various needs so that uh, as amazing as it may seem, uh, taking a single simple pill once a day that's a life-saving saving medication uh, in the disorganized life of some people turns out to be not the most important thing to them, even if you're uh, doing everything you can to incentivize them. Um, it's a difficult problem, and uh, many people are working on it, and this is just another reason that we need to figure out better ways to deliver treatment to more people, better ways to prevent people from becoming uh, infected with preventive medications or vaccines, and ultimately down the road, ways to maybe cure HIV infection. Uh, doctor, I've got time for one more question. And, and of course, uh, preceding uh, our conversation, we saw the report from Jack Barton and heard from Michelle Bege. I wanted to get your thoughts about this uh, new strain, the CRF-19 uh, strain. What's the significance of it to somebody like yourself? Well, I don't actually know a whole lot of the um, scientific details. I haven't looked at the report myself. Uh, the recombination of viruses, HIV viruses, in different parts of the world has happened before. Uh, this sounds like potentially uh, this recombinant virus causes progressive disease more rapidly, as was described. But as also, as I think was mentioned in the report, it sort of comes back to finding people that are infected and getting them into care and treating them, a challenge in Cuba and in the U.S. as well. Uh, we know therapy works uh, wonderfully 
if we can get it to people and we can get people into medical care and on treatment. Dr. David Margolis joining us from Seattle. Thanks so much.